B-Hop shoots for the top of the light heavyweight division. Bama comes at you from the United Kingdom, and it's showtime emanates from Amsterdam. This is the Fight Network's preview show. You know, I dominated the fight. I threw a lot of combinations. I had a lot of energy. He was holding. Look at his face and look at mine. Hey everybody, it's John Pollock here and welcome to the Fight Network's preview show. Lots of action coming your way this weekend and we're going to be chatting with Jimmy Corderas a little later on as we preview WWE's Over the Limit card Sunday night. As well, John Ramdean will be here as we preview Bama 6, which is going to be airing here live on the Fight Network, as well as It's Showtime. But we'll start off with boxing action first because Saturday night the Bell Center is going to be rocking as we present a rematch for the WBC Light Heavyweight Gold. WBC light heavyweight champion Jean Pascal defends his gold against Bernard Hopkins for the second time in six months this Saturday. The Bell Center in Montreal will see the 26 one one champion step into the ring against a 46-year-old veteran of 58 fights. The two fought to a majority draw this past December in Quebec City. Fighting up the ranks in his adopted home of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Jean Pascal burst onto the scene devastating most of his opponents by way of TKO. Jean Pascal is big news in Quebec. Oh, oh boy, he whipped That's it. it. That's got to be it. This guy can punch, he can box, he's good looking, he's charismatic. I love him. Putting together 21 consecutive wins, the Haitian Canadian went on to face another rising star at the time in Carl Froch on Froch's turf. Who are you? Who are you? The chance go up. A vacant WBC super middleweight title was on the line, and though it was a spirited affair, Pascal fell short in his performance. Following his first loss, Pascal quickly found his bearings and rebounded in spectacular fashion. Showed a lot of heart, man. A lot of heart. After moving up in weight, Pascal captured the WBC light heavyweight title with a victory over Adrian Diakon. Pascal jumps right on him. He thinks he's hurt. Back from Madison Square Garden last week. Last The champion was riding high on a three-fight title defense. I want the best in the world. Hopkins, anybody. I want to prove I'm one, of the, I'm one of the best. On December 18th, 2010, Pascal encountered a challenge that would test him in and out of the ring. I beat this guy. It does nothing for me. The light heavyweight division since myself and Joe Gazaki four years ago became what? A mystery. And so I leave permanently, then there's really no face on this division. Tensions in the lead up to the fight were in top gear as mastermind manipulator Bernard Hopkins used his trash talking to offset the young champion. I'm gonna pull the covers off him. He's a fraud Canadian. He's a, he, he's a Delancey Street, New York reject, a uh, 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 wannabe Canadian. One thing that I know about Bernard is, he's funny, he's fast, and he's about to get f***ed up. It was a showdown between new school and old school. It was youth versus experience. Pascal starts to come on a little bit. Round eight. That was a good shot from Hopkins. It was a good shot from Hopkins and also a good shot from uh, John Pascal. Albeit a knockdown in the third, Hopkins put forth an impressive effort that proved he could still hang with the elite in the light heavyweight division. It's extraordinary that Hopkins can look like this. Despite the gutsy performance, the event faced controversy with the final decision. 114 to 112, Bernard Hopkins. That Pascal knew he was in a fight. He knew that I wasn't 45 years in that ring. 113 to 113, a draw. And he knew that he had to run to save his life and to save that belt because I was on him, especially the last two rounds. 114. To 114, a draw. The decision is a majority draw. Pascal retains the light heavyweight title. Pascal wasn't overly happy. He's banged up. He's a younger guy. But I took him to school. He got some good shots in, and he should. With a 45-year-old guy, you he said, should. He should get some good shots. You clearly won this fight. You said. In 1994, you, you clearly won. Yeah. The executioner has executed several challengers. I got a history of ending careers. Maybe they don't stop boxing completely, but it's something about their next performance. Jermaine Teller got the belt, but I took his career. Kelly Pavlik, when the last time he looked. Cooked by Bernard Hopkins. That 
when the last time Antonio Tarver looked good. He is bullying Antonio Tarver. He's gotten inside Tarver's head. Hopkins can look back on a successful career that has included a 10-year title reign, but the goal of becoming boxing's oldest champion has increased B-Hop's motivation. The reason I'm probably not left boxing now is because of, of the history that I, I can still you know, ac accomplish and make. At 46 years of age, Hopkins is embarking on yet another feud that could add to his legacy. I will prove again that any young fighter gets in the ring with Bernard Hopkins. It's not the age that gives you the advantage. It's the experience to make you survive. He doesn't have that. Emotions are running high as Pascal is focused on toppling a legend, but the Canadian will have to put forth a more dominant performance if he wishes to erase any doubts from their first bout. He's the legend. He did he made history and uh, you know he wants to remake history again, but I'm gonna stop him. As the war of words mount and fight night draws closer, the champion will have to be mentally stable and prepared against a viable veteran in Bernard Hopkins, who could very well shock the world one more time. Joining us right now here is boxing analyst Corey Erdman as we look ahead to this coming Saturday's rematch. But Corey, you were there at ringside at the Quebec City fight in December. And in your estimation, was that a fair assessment ruling that fight a draw? It, it could have been a crime. Uh, but if you look at it and look at the scorecards, Jean Pascal has two knockdowns. So if you give him the two rounds with the knockdowns as 10-8 rounds, that means he already has four rounds in the bank. So that means that Hopkins, in order to catch up, has to win another eight rounds. Now, if you think that he did, I think that's perfectly fair, but I also think it's fair to say that Pascal took two or three of the other rounds. So I think a draw is acceptable, but if you look at the entirety of the fight, Hopkins is probably the victor. He controlled the majority of that bout. So if you're Jean Pascal and his management right now, going back and looking at that tape, what are some holes that he clearly needs to assess heading into this rematch? Well, I think the issue is with Jean Pascal's stamina, and it's an issue with his mentality as well. I think it was a combination of both in the first fight. There's no question that Jean Pascal likes to fight in spots, and that's probably because he doesn't have the greatest stamina. He likes to jump in, likes to get his work in and get out and then take some time off. But I get the sense that Pascal, after those first two knockdowns, thought that he had the fight in the bag and then gave Hopkins openings because this wasn't an issue of Bernard Hopkins countering Jean Pascal. It was an issue of Pascal standing there and during his bouts of inactivity, Hopkins being able to dive in and get some work in specifically to the body. So if you're Pascal, look at fights like your matchup against Adrian Diakonu the first time when you threw in between 575, you know, that range of punches. Get active. If you stay active, I think that he can neutralize Hopkins as opposed to the other way around. Hopkins is obviously one of the top defensive fighters in, in, in this style of bout, in this setting. Is he going to have to stop Pascal to ensure the victory? Yeah, and you know what? I think there's some misconceptions when it comes to Bernard Hopkins right now in 2011. Even though he's only three fights removed from that Kelly Pavlik fight, he's not really the same fighter. Against Kelly Pavlik, we saw him neutralize Pavlik's ones and twos. You saw him countering Pavlik a lot, a lot of hooks uh, off the counter, countering Pavlik's jab. The 2011 Bernard Hopkins is not quite as quick, he's not quite as mobile, so he needs to find openings. He's not going to counter Pascal because Pascal's too strong and too fast diving in. As long as Pascal can do that often enough, he can keep Hopkins on his heels, and we saw that in the first four rounds, and we even saw a little bit down the stretch at the end of the fight when Pascal could have been winning rounds at the end. If he keeps doing that, I think you take Hopkins out of his element. Your pick, Corey, to be leaving the Bell Center with the WBC light heavyweight gold. Here's the thing, I think there's room for improvement with Jean Pascal, but I think that Bernard Hopkins fought the best fight he could possibly fight last time out. I have to pick the guy who has a ceiling, he has somewhere to go. I think Jean Pascal does enough to get the decision this time around. The undercard of Pascal versus Hopkins will feature another light heavyweight bout as 29-1 Bad Chad Dawson will step into the ring with 27-2 Adrian Diakonu. Dawson is coming off the first loss of his professional career last August to the WBC champion Pascal. Diakonu shares a similar mark with his two blemishes, also courtesy of Pascal. It's Showtime returns this coming Saturday from Amsterdam, Holland, and it'll be airing here on the Fight Network at 6 p.m. Eastern, featuring two heavyweight bouts as well as a fight for the vacant 85-kilogram title. It's showtime! On Saturday, May 21st, Fight Network is pleased to bring viewers its showtime, which returns to Amsterdam, Holland, and kickboxing fans are in for a treat when heavyweight champion Hedzi Herja steps into the squared circle to face dangerous UK kickboxer Chris Knowles. 
The 27-year-old Herjes, who holds victories over K1 stars Badahari, Daniel Gita and Ruslan Kuraya, will look to use his size and power to take out his adversary in spectacular fashion. The 6-foot, six 6.5-inch six behemoth has devastating kicks and will use the distance to punish Knowles from the outside. Conditioning will not be an issue for the Dutch-Egyptian fighter as he has 16 wins by decision, proving he is more than happy to go the distance if need be. The Max 85 kilogram championship is up for grabs as Sayak Paparian challenges Hedze Herjes' teammate Amir Ziada in a thrilling matchup. Ziada holds two KO wins over the talented Tyrone Spong, but only has five victories in his past 20 bouts. And some wonder why he's been given a shot at the belt, vacated by Dutch destroyer Melvin Manhoff. And a rematch from their 2010 K1 Max bout, fierce Moroccan fighter Mohamed Kamal hopes to make it two in a row when he meets Holland's Rob Van Roosmalen in a 70 kilogram pairing. These two youngsters could be the future of the division, as both men are under 22 years of age. Van Roosmalen is well trained fighting out of the famed Golden Glory Academy, while Kamal hones his skills at the highly regarded Voss Gym in the Netherlands. These fights and so much more, and you can catch them right here on Fight Network. This coming Saturday, it's Showtime presents their 49th event, and joining us right now to break it down is John Ramdeen and a very interesting heavyweight bout as we'll see Hesdi Herges in action taking on Chris Knowles. Yeah, this is really a showcase fight for Herges. Uh, it's Showtime trying to build up their heavyweight division. They have Tyrone Spong, Badahari, Daniel Gita, and of course the champion Herges. So he really just wants to go out there and take out Chris Knowles, a very talented kickboxer, but not on the level of the champion. And plays off really well of the card last weekend in France where we saw Spong, we saw Daniel Gita, and we saw Badahari all in action and really an intriguing heavyweight division that it's Showtime has fostered here. Exactly. I mean, they're trying to promote Tyrone Spong as the greatest thing in the world. Badahari, a very talented guy, knockout power, great range and a, an aggressive attack. And lots of people want to, they really want to see the rematch with Herzies and Badahari. So expect that to, to happen in the future. But of course, Spong and Badahari has to happen because that's what the entire kickboxing world want to see. And Daniel Gita, I mean, this guy is really rising up the ranks. K1's not around. It's Showtime is the next best thing. And we'll also see a 70 kilogram bout as a Robin Van Rusmalen takes on Mohamed Kamal. Yeah, two young explosive fighters. They want to really make a name for themselves. Both guys under 22 years of age. So very interesting to see the 70 kilogram class. Of course, Georgia Petrosian, one of the greatest uh, kickboxers in the entire world. He performed last week. Of course, it wasn't the uh, outcome he was hoping for, but nonetheless, we got to see him perform as well as the champion Chris Nagimbi. A great division for its showtime. And catch it here, 6 p.m. Eastern this coming Saturday. When we come back, we'll take a look at Bama 6 coming to you live from London, England, as well as the WWE's Over the Limit pay-per-view this coming weekend. Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, your home for Bama 6 is here on the Fight Network, airing live at 4 p.m. Eastern as the organization comes to you from the Wembley Arena in London, England, headlined by Ninja Hua taking on Tom Watson. MMA takes over Wembley Arena in London, England on Saturday, May the 21st for the British Association of Mixed Martial Arts 6. In the evening's main event, Pride FC veteran Marillo Ninja Hua takes on England's own Tom Kong Watson for the middleweight championship. Over his past 10 fights, the Zahabi MMA trained Watson has gone 9-1 and, and will be a stern test for the experienced Brazilian who has seen many wars over his 30-plus fight career. After dispatching four straight opponents, the Curitiba native dropped a hard-fought decision to Caesar Gracie team member Roy Bouton in Halifax. The former Elite XC 185-pound king is a well-rounded fighter, but his best days may be behind him, and Watson will try to exploit any weakness he sees. Former WFA welterweight champion Frank Trigg will be in action for the first time this year when he tangles with Welsh fighter John Phillips in a middleweight bout. At 39 years of age, Trigg is still a fierce competitor whose grappling skills may give him the edge against a man 14 years his junior. However, if the Extreme Couture School Trigg decides to keep the fight standing, he could find himself in a bunch of trouble, as 12 of Phillips' 13 wins have come by some form of knockout. After officially retiring from the sport three years ago, Toronto-born Ivan Salivary makes his mixed martial arts return to take on Cage Rage veteran Matt Ewan, who is riding a five-fight winning streak. 40-year-old AMC Pancration fighter Salivary replaces the injured Phil Baroni, who was forced off the card. Also on the card, Jiu-Jitsu specialist Leo Santos will try and showcase his ground abilities and improve on his 8-3 record. And Ultimate Fighter alum Aaron Wilkinson will look to unleash the beast in a lightweight contest. It all goes down on May 21st, Bama 6 at the Wembley Arena. 
Hey, it's John Ramsey, and he's stuck around, so I guess we'll chat about Bama 6, which is going to be airing live here 4 p.m. Eastern this coming Saturday. It's going to be headlined by a middleweight title bout as champion Tom Kong Watson defends against Marillo Ninja Hua. And let's first chat about Hua right now and where he fits into the world of mixed martial arts in 2011. Well, he fits in because he's available. He's a guy who has a name, who's fought for Elite XC, former champion, fought for Pride Fighting Championships. Of course, he's the brother of former UFC light heavyweight champion Shogun Hua. So he has all the creden credentials and a promoter. That's what a promoter's looking for, a name like Ninja to put in the main event. Uh, this is an unsanctioned event. Any coincidence there? Oh, exactly. Ninja has had issues with uh, head trauma in the past. Wouldn't get sanctioned in New Jersey. So does this fight make a whole lot of sense? Well, not if you want to promote your health. And Ninja really is putting himself at risk in this fight. But the fans are going to benefit because this guy's a very exciting fighter who has awesome skills everywhere except the wrestling department. And I think that's where Tom Kong Watson will try to exploit it. Do you pick Watson in this fight? I think so. I think he's going to put a beat down on Murillo Ninja who in this fight. I think he's going to take this fight wherever he needs to take it and the chances are he's going to put him on on the ground try to pound his way to a victory and uh, unfortunately I think Ninja will be on the receiving end of a serious beating. We'll also see Frank Trigg in action for the first time since last fall when he competed for the Israel Fighting Championship. He's going to be taking on John Phillips whose nickname is the White Mike Tyson. What yeah, a loser. I mean, he wants to really go out there and take out a name like Frank Trigg. Frank Trigg's still at the top of his game, a very talented fighter, and the, one of the reasons why is because he has that wrestling base. He gets to dictate where the fight goes. If he wants the fight down to the ground, he'll take it there. If he wants to showcase his hands, which I do not recommend in this fight, uh, it could be a short night if Trigg decides to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I expect him to use his wrestling, put this fight down to the ground, and uh, grind out a three-round decision. Twinkle Toes or the White Mike Tyson? Yeah, it's going to be Twinkle Toes. Too experienced, uh, too good of a camp that he trains in. In, and I think that uh, his experience facing some of the guys in the past, like George St. Pierre and Matt Hughes, will help him. He'll go down to the ground and win this fight by decision. The winner gets a nickname. We'll also see Ivan Salivary coming back out of retirement. He hasn't fought since UFC 84, all the way back in May of 2008. Uh, three years in the sport, uh, that might as well be 100 years. Yeah, I mean, the sport has evolved so much in the past three years. Uh, we just hope that he's uh, ahead of the curve, training at AMC Pancration with guys like Matt Hume. You know he would be. He's an intelligent fighter who is one of the most well-rounded fighters uh, a number of years ago and I would expect the time off has helped him with injuries and uh, I, I just don't know if uh, the time out of the spotlight is good for him though. Ivan Salivary, he'll be taking on former cab driver Matt Ewan and you can catch that live Saturday 4 p.m. Eastern right here on Fight Network. When we come back we'll welcome Jimmy Corderas to the program to help us preview the WWE Over the Limit pay-per-view taking place Sunday in Seattle, Washington. Coming up on Sunday night, the WWE returns to pay-per-view for the second time in May. They're going to be presenting Over the Limit from the Key Arena in Seattle, Washington. The main event Sunday night will feature WWE Champion John Cena defending his WWE Championship against former champion The Miz. Plus, we'll see world champion Randy Orton on the SmackDown side defending his gold against Christian, who only held the title for 48 hours after winning the gold at Extreme Rules. Michael Cole is going to be taking on Jerry Lawler with a number of stipulations added to this one, including Jerry Lawler having to give his Hall of Fame ring to Michael Cole if he loses the match. R-Truth will be taking on Rey Mysterio in a singles match. This was originally scheduled to be R-Truth and John Morrison until Morrison had to have neck surgery and is going to be out for a number of weeks. And we'll also see Wade Barrett defending the Intercontinental Championship against former core member Ezekiel Jackson. Jimmy Corderas is here as we look ahead to WWE's Over the Limit pay-per-view taking place from Seattle, Washington this coming Sunday. And it's going to be headlined, Jimmy, by John Cena defending the WWE gold against The Miz in an I Quit match, which I would presume is the end of this feud. Uh, it looks like it's going that way. I definitely do not see John Cena uttering the words, I quit. It's probably not even in his vocabulary other than those promos he was doing leading up to the match. Uh, the Miz, obviously, he's been a very effective heel, I think, since they put him into this top position. Coming out of this pay-per-view, I think that's going to be the key, is trying to keep this guy elevated within the mix and not attached to Cena. That's going to be the difficult thing right now, especially coming out of WrestleMania, you know, dealing with uh, having The Rock in the program, having John Cena in the program, and their, their mic work has been over the top. I think... Uh, Maybe a little bit of a backseat taken by Miz, and it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. 
Over on the SmackDown side, Randy Orton defends the World Championship against Christian. Uh, a lot of outrage when Christian only held the title for two days. Uh, they had a fantastic match, though, on television, and I expect this to be a really solid match on Sunday as well. Yeah, I'm expecting a solid match from these two. Here's the question, though. Whether Christian wins the title or not at Over the Limit, I want to see where they go from there. Is Christian still going to be in the world title picture, or is this going to be something to... Is, is Christian just going to be fading off into the distance and bringing in another challenger? I hope not. I hope this goes all the way to SummerSlam at least. Michael Cole is going to be taking on Jerry Lawler. I think it's appropriate that this show is called Over the Limit because I thought the limit of matches these two should have had was one, and that was at WrestleMania. A terrible singles match, and they're going to try and do it all over again Sunday night. Yeah, please let this thing end on Sunday. I, I, I'm begging. It's just... It's it's gone way past the point of no return now. If this thing continues after Sunday, I'm mentally tuning out. I might have to turn my volume down on my TV listening to Michael Cole every week. In addition to Over the Limit, we're going to get you set Monday night coming here to the Fight Network. It's Tough Enough, debuting at 7 Eastern on Monday night. Obviously, uh, a very, very intriguing season that the WWE has put together here, uh, featuring Steve Austin as your host, and then Bill DeMott, Booker T as your trainers. Yeah, it's, it's actually really, really, really different from anything you're going to see on television. It's fantastic. I mean, you know, here, here guys, of course, Steve Austin is tremendous. Bill DeMott is a star in the making. Booker T is a trainer like you've never seen before. And and even Trish Stratus. Of course, some local flavors. Yes. So it's, it's a show you don't want to miss. It's going to be coming up Monday, 7 Eastern, premiering here on the Fight Network. That's going to wrap us up for this week, everybody. We hope you enjoy all of the action. A big thank you to Corey Erdman, John Ramdean, Jimmy Corderas, and our entire Fight Network staff, and our friends here at the Ballroom in downtown Toronto. I'm John Pollock. Thanks for tuning in, and enjoy all of the fights. He is the king of the light heavyweight division, because I want to dress him up just the way he earned it. Because when it's over, you will be foolish to say I'm not the man. Again, second time. Bad news for him. I went to high school. I didn't have good grades. I had great grades. I've been to college and I had my diploma. And one thing that I know about Bernard is he's funny, he's fast, and he's about to get f***ed up. So he's three heads in my class. So he failed the class. Bernard, we're on the air. Can we get your reaction? I'm going to on the air. Hey, man, I ain't got no reaction. The world seen it. They didn't want me to, you know. Come on, man, I had the guy beat up. He's holding. I'm the older guy. Come on, man. That, that, that's, not, that's not right, man. This is, I won every round. They got me winning damn every round. This segment on the Fight Network is brought to you by The Ballroom, downtown Toronto's newest interactive entertainment center.